All right. <laughs> <laughs> Can we leave that in? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, it's 1027, Baltimore, Maryland, just got out of Baltimore Soundstage once again. It's uh, Monday, July 11th, and boy, we saw a show. It was um, Matt, Matt Miller, <laughs> Matt Miller, Distinguisher, Extortionist, and Rings of Saturn. And uh, take it away, Walter. Hey, how are you guys? Uh, Walter here. It's been a while since we last recorded. We went through a little uh, little break in between. Our lives got a little um, little busy with work. Uh, I still made it to some shows, but I wasn't able to like record them. And uh, yeah, we we just got out of seeing Rings of Saturn. Uh, we missed the first act, Matt Miller. Uh, I'm sorry, dude. We left a little late, and we decided to get some food. We the first band we saw was Distinguisher. They're out of Nevada or Nevada. How you how the fuck do you say it? Uh, but left in Nevada, Nevada. Las Vegas, Nevada. 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 <laughs> uh, they, they fuck. They, they very much fuck. Yeah, it was my first time hearing them and like, uh, just sheer gnarliness that they kind of just brought to the show was just like, very much, and like, I don't know, they, they set the tone, <laughs> Distinguisher and The Extortionist and, uh, yeah, I think those two are my favorite bands of the night. We mainly came here for, uh, for Rings of Saturn, but, uh, yeah, I, right now, this is kind of an awkward vibe to talk about. Just, like, um, I haven't seen a show kind of just fall, I didn't really see a band, like, kind of, like, didn't really have, I wouldn't say they had their shit together, they, they very much had their shit together, but they went through some technical difficulties, uh, but the first half of the show for, uh, Rings of Saturn, um, I, uh, didn't know what they were doing. I, like, uh, they have a pretty wide discography, to be honest. They got, uh, the first album, some, Something Anomaly. Uh, then they, then they have Dinger, uh, Lugal Kien, and then they have Jadem, and then they have Ulta Ulta. Ulta Ula? Yeah. Ulta. Well, <laughs> yeah, something like that. And, uh, they, they have very much a wide discography that you would, think they uh would play from any of them and like their melodies are very recognizable today like the first half of the show they were doing this like lo-fi hip-hop mix with their uh with their shredding guitar parts i think me and the crowd were very much confused because we weren't well it's one thing for a band to play like new stuff but today they didn't have a, their vocalist they didn't have a basis. They were doing everything through uh, through DI computer, so everything was very much like pre-recorded. Nothing wrong with that, uh, but I don't know what happened with one of the cables. It looks like it failed, and then they had to take a little break. And uh, in order to kind of keep the crowd entertained, uh, the drummers just started blast beating, and I was like, "Cool, hell yeah!" And then uh, I think after the technical difficulty, they start playing like um, somewhat recognizable songs. Yeah, faces. Was, was that the song? That's one I recognized. Gotcha. Said, yeah. We were really up. We were up front. I couldn't really hear that well, to be honest. I think I should have stayed in. We should have stayed. Was huge. Very was much huge. huge. Yeah, the bass was like overwhelming. It was like absorbing all the sound. So yeah, this was the Cyber Shred tour. This show was a total inverse of what I thought it was going to be. I had no clue about the openers. Didn't particularly care about them. I was just there for. Rings of Saturn, just wanted some, you know, tech death on a Monday night, a no biggie. Um, was that too much to ask for? <laughs> Apparently. Uh, maybe I'll cut that out. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> oh, God damn. But uh, Distinguisher surprised me. I bought their CD, their tone. They were hard. They kind of kept me guessing, too. Like, they just, I, it sort of, like, felt like I knew where they were going to go, and then they'd change it up on me almost I don't know if it's too much in this angle but almost like a little mathy extortionist was really good they were grimier they were more just like like sledgehammer to the face straight to the point like deathcore hardcore it's like rubbing dirt in your wound 
Yeah. <laughs> but you love it. Yeah, they were, they were from Washington State. They were really cool. You, uh, cool. Walter chatted with them a little bit at the merch table. Uh, uh, Devin and I were chatting with them. But Devin uh, was talking to them more. He was pretty cool. They, I mean, they seemed all really cool. I was talking to the vocalist, too. They were super nice. Uh, actually, some of the nicest people on tour that I've met, like, literally just talking to the fans. They were just happy to be on the road and uh, just kind of bringing, like, Massacre to the, to the States. Baltimore. Gotta bring the slams. Gotta bring the slams. Especially when Rings of Saturn is uh, not bringing uh, any of the brutality or like heaviness that they normally do. You want so, to? No, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> like, no mic for me. <coughs> I talk too much shit. The girl do not give me that. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, like, it was a. I don't know. Those two bands really stole the show. Like, Distinguisher and, ex- and uh, Extortionist, like, they fucked. They fucked our ears. But I want to say, like, shouts out to the drummer for ex- um, Distinguisher. Distinguisher. He, I, dude, he was, like, one of the most entertaining drummers I've seen. Like, um, He's really animated. Very animated. Yeah, he was very animated, the drummer for Distinguisher. He did drop his stick mid-set, but he, like, he still kept beat. So, and, but, like, he was doing a lot of antics, kind of like... Um, during certain parts, he would just have his, like, one stick in the air, like, kind of just building, like, interacting with the crowd, making faces. And then at some point, he had one of the sticks, like a machine gun, going, like, <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, I don't know, he seemed really animated, just really about, like, what he was doing. And I was like, I fuck with that. And uh, just everyone in the whole band was really about what, what they were doing. He, I mean, I was, I was just, like, very much happy that they were having fun. Distinguisher and Extortionist both really got the crowd moving. It wasn't a particularly massive crowd. I mean, it was a Monday night. It was kind of small, but they worked with it. There was a lot of hardcore dancing and moshing, and people were super into it. And then it just got awkward with Rings of Saturn. So they didn't have a vocalist. I, I wasn't expecting that. I haven't, Rings of Saturn isn't like an all-time favorite. I dig them. Um, I haven't been following it, so no vocalist, so I was kind of surprised by that. But I was like, whatever, instrumental set. We've seen Periphery instrumental. We've seen Monuments instrumental. I'm like, this is cool. It's yeah. not what I wanted, but it's like a new flavor. It's a new experience. But the first half of the set, I was so confused. There was just a backing track. Sometimes it was like a trap beat. Other times it was like a goofy old sci-fi synthesizer, and they were just playing over it. But they weren't doing any songs I recognized. And, I mean, I'm not a diehard fan, but I feel somewhat literate of their songs. Like, they have pretty recognizable melodies and hooks and stuff. And for a while, I was like, is this all just, like, off of Ula Ultu? Because that's, like, the one album that doesn't super stick for me. But a lot of people were kind of confused. And I think they were just sort of, like, jamming, just trying to do something instrumentally. And so I don't know if... Towards the end of the set, they started playing some older stuff. Like I mentioned, Faces Imploding. And I don't know if they switched to that because they got the vibe that people weren't into it or if that's just what the set was, was to eventually end on the older stuff. Mm-hmm. That was better. That's probably what the whole set should have been. Not gonna lie, I feel very awkward. I'm still, th- I'm still thinking about the show. I'm still thinking about like what I just, like kind of just saw, and kind of like felt like to me, like the vibe was very much local show vibe, like awkward. I'm kind of like um, awkward waiting to see what the band is doing, but like the thing is, like this is a pretty recognizable band. I don't know, man. Like I really like Limp Rings of Saturn. I, st- I still really like them a lot, actually. I can still tell they were still very focused what they're doing. Um, and I think they were just trying to get through it. I think that's that's basically what just happened. They were just trying to get through it. One of the old members uh, from, um, he played on Lugal Kien, uh, Joel Omans. 
he's a really slick guitarist and kind of seeing him coming back i was like that's awesome you know like uh he was on he was on like that uh yellow actually yeah, he was on Lugo Lugo Kian. i already said that and um i know they they split off for a bit and then um and he's back and i was very much like excited to see him back because uh for a while miles dimitri was uh was the second guitarist for uh rings of saturn and then like he's a badass himself they didn't even have their old drummer uh aaron i don't know i don't recognize this drummer not saying that it's a bad thing but like uh i don't know just like uh i just kind of don't understand like what happened what's going on with rings of saturn right now just like i'm a little disappointed to be honest with theirs with them Oh, yeah, like I like I don't want to knock a band for technical yeah. difficulties because yeah. it happens. They did handle it well. I, I feel like the awkwardness sort of just stems from like the members themselves. Like mm-hmm. like just right at the start of the set, I mean the drummer didn't look particularly into it. He's like a fill in. He's just so they can tour. You know, Lucas looked kind of disgruntled. Joel looked awkward and was just trying to like tend to the computer. So I feel like knowing their kind of history of drama and stuff that it's probably some sort of like internal strife that just kind of manifested into the awkwardness and the technical difficulties was just layering on top of it but yeah there were a couple of moments there at the start where they were just doing the jamming things and the beats where if i closed my eyes i would think i was just like in a club and yeah. something was playing like it was it didn't feel like there was a live band in front of me mm-hmm. Um, and then it just felt sort of like goofy when they would do like blast beats or uh, mm-hmm. breakdowns just to try to like appease the crowd and try to like win them back or something. It, it, yeah, it, it it was strange. It felt very much like a local show and we were all just kind of there being like, mm-hmm. there you go, guys, you're doing it. <laughs> I, I was kind of told that they do have an idea for the direction they want to move forward with. Mm-hmm. I was not exactly told what that is, but apparently the group of people they have now they are definitely going to move forward and kind of have like a better show for people. And I was told that by someone else in another band that they definitely have plans for like moving forward. They're going to have like a better show. I don't know if that means the vocalist is kind of what I like got out of it, but like also the other vocalist, like I guess that recorded the EP decided he didn't want to like play music with them anymore. So who knows what that's about? Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> Zoinks. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, it could just be growing pains until they kind of yeah. get back into their groove or try something new. There's always something with that band. Really? Yeah, there's always something weird going on. But I mean, one, the one thing that stays constant is, um, I, I guess, like Lucas Mann, he's still there. So he obviously believes in this project enough to keep it going and then members keep switching out so i'm assuming there there's something there that the people that the band members want to achieve so I, i'm not not gonna see them every time they come around but today it's just like it was just it's, it's, yeah, it's like a one-off yeah it's a one-off yeah. but um hopefully i mean i'm still gonna support y'all guys you know yeah we've seen because we've seen them before I've never, I don't think seen them headline before. We've definitely seen them like open or be a part of festivals and stuff. And like they're tight when they have a set list of just like five or six songs. They're stupid heavy. Like uh, seen, I've seen them many times. Uh, I think I went to like Virginia to see them like uh, their early days when they were touring with this one band, which doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. Elitist. Uh, Yeah, you remember them? Yeah, Yeah, they were so good. And then uh, seeing them. Here at Soundstage with like uh, with the Lugakian setup, it was really tight. Like I, w- I was always very much impressed. Very much the crowd was about them, you know. Like just seeing like Alien, Tech Death, you know, and it was awesome. And uh, it's just I guess today is just one of those. It's a bad egg today. I guess that's maybe that's what I was looking for. Bad egg, bad egg by like um, I, I hope I hope to see them like have a better l- lineup next time, you know. Like just. I don't know what happened happened and uh I just hope y'all kind of get it together with uh, best wishes <laughs> just roll with it and begin your redemption arc mm-hmm. redemption. uh <laughs> <laughs> 
On a total tangent, I wore a car, car bomb shirt and it was a big <laughs> damn yeah. hit. Man, people loved me. Holy shit, I had like you six. Make it out of the parking garage before I said something. <laughs> <laughs> I had like six or seven people come up to me. And I, I've I, at a show, I've had like one at most two people, and it's usually like one person who's like real coy and is just like, "I like your shirt." This was just people. Man, people love car bomb, yeah, yeah, and rightfully so. Yeah, they're they fuck. <laughs> car bomb fucks. Car bomb fuck. fucks. Yeah, I mean we've mentioned this before. Me and Brent traveled to Philadelphia to see them just opening. Even though we've seen uh, Periphery and Animals as Leaders, we we literally went out to see them. And then for their uh, what Mordial album release yeah. show, we went up to all the way to King's Land to their like hometown Brooklyn. It was Brooklyn, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that that venue was awesome. Loved it. Like one of my dream bars, like death metal and pizza. <laughs> I loved it, and like the room was so small, like you felt so cramped, and it was just like, but you felt like at home, and you felt like everybody's loving you. It was awesome, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have anything else to say about tonight's show. Yeah, I don't either. Do we give ratings? Is that a thing we do? Yeah, we do give ratings. <laughs> <laughs> do we give a score? Yeah, that's right. Oy. Um, boy, oh boy. I don't know. Maybe like a solid seven, mostly for Distinguisher and Extortionist. Uh, I mean, yeah. I, or six I, point five. I don't know. Like, I was really disappointed, like, with Bring the Saturn. And, like, to kind of bring down, like, my personal score, to bring them down a little bit because like that whole like the headlining act was something i was really looking forward to like to me it was like a 6.8 like distinguisher and uh the extortionist like they they fucking killed it for me and we didn't see matt miller so i can't really judge a lot on that show but like that awkwardness was really hard and and the thing that actually really disappointed me more is that most bands usually have an encore but um they didn't have an encore. That, that they, was awkward. Yeah, like everyone stayed silent. People, and I was trying to like hope for another song, but like the music came on and everyone's just kind of like getting a little like restless. And uh, they turned on the music, and the show was actually over. And I was, I think that's when my like my jaw dropped a little bit when I was just like, wow, um, this was. This was a vibe for sure. I went to the bathroom right after their set and people were just talking shit yeah, <laughs> at the I urinals know. and washing was their hands wrong? and stuff. Everyone was just like, this was not what we signed up for. Another weird sign. So sometimes I'll get on like setlist.com or .fm, whatever it's called, because people will post like mm-hmm. band set lists. So I can get an idea of like, oh, cool. You know, towards the end, they'll play this favorite song or whatever. For like this entire tour, no one has posted the songs they've been playing. It's it was like a really weird thing I've never seen before. Mm-hmm. Like either no one cared enough to do it, or no one recognized what was going on. It, either way, it's very strange. I mean, rightfully so because I didn't understand what was going on. But yeah, I changed my I changed my score to six point five <laughs> or six point eight for yeah. to be weirdly specific. Um, do, do you want to change score? <laughs> <laughs> Special guest, first time appearance, Devin. Much appreciated. Loved going to the show with you two. Um, I would give it a seven, but so I enjoyed Ring to Saturn, but I understand the qualms everybody has, especially like you know at first you would think that like without a vocalist that was the issue, but like really like the first half of their set was just like not anything anybody wanted to hear, and I heard some songs that like I did enjoy, which I thoroughly enjoyed because I love watching anyone shred. But, you know, it was enough for me to give it a seven, but also, like, Distinguisher and Extortionist, like, they really, that really, they really were great. And I wish I had seen, the, like, the first Matt Miller, because, like, I feel like he would also have been great, because yeah. I, I saw his Instagram, and it looks like he plays a very large guitar. Yeah. And I love, I love watching people shred. Yeah. So that's, that's why I came here. I saw some shredding. I wish I would seen more shredding from a certain group of people. <laughs> but I, I see why it possibly didn't happen. But just know the other bands made up for it. Uh, Deathcore forever, or for like another three years. <laughs> we'll see. I, I think Deathcore be uh, to be. I think Deathcore is here to stay. I don't think it's going. It's not going anywhere. I feel like every time I think it's going away, I realize like people still really like it and like people love like death metal with that the, like 
breakdown and groovy section of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that will always attract a certain group of people. And I think every time I think it's going away, it will last forever. I think it's just going to last forever. It keeps having resurgences. We're going to die. We're all going to die, but Deathcore is here to stay. My, I'll make sure my grandkids listen to Deathcore. They'll, they'll, hear, Oce, they'll hear Oceano in the Acacia Strand. <laughs> They're like, oh, daddy's playing Oceano They're again. Like, Granddad, no, don't play Death. You know the, you know those like rocks that are actually speakers, but it's meant yeah. to blend in? That's like what your tombstone is. It's just blasting Deathcore at all times, 24-7. <laughs> Yo, that's not a bad idea to invest in, actually. Yeah, like tombstones. Yeah. Tombstones with the, your... Dying. The cemeteries are super obnoxious because everyone's just blasting their annoying stuff. Someone's got like noise music. It's just like uh, scraping uh, noises noise and stuff. <laughs> wow, this sounds really sounds like Lacroix. <laughs> just tastes this sounds like static. Mm. <laughs> that was the last sound he made. Tastes like strawberries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tastes like snozberries. <laughs> well, that's all I got. Yeah, that's all I got too. I. I'm gonna sign off. Uh, this has been a pleasure. Uh, thank you, Devin, for, for having me. You guys are fucking great. <laughs> thank you. I thank you. Put the curse on this podcast. Yeah, it's fine. Right? We, oh, I, 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 I yeah, curse a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I thought I wanted to keep it PG, but I was like, fuck it. Yeah. I, I, I did for the first. Real like, podcasts have cursing. <laughs> Real, I censored for the men. Like the first two episodes, I was like, where's my grandma? Look, here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. If these real crime, true crime podcasts want to talk about a bunch of dead people that have recently died, I think. Anybody should be able to get monetized for cursing on the metal podcast. <laughs> That's just my view. I'm just saying what I have to say. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm signing off. Uh, it was it been a pleasure. My name is Walter. Thanks for tuning in. This was Brent. And I'm Devin. Peace, y'all. Peace. <laughs>